Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into Unity of Command 2. We're going to do a fun little combat and logistics tutorial. There's also a North Africa DLC releasing in July. And the game is currently 60% off, so I really want people who haven't experienced this game to see what it's all about and to have a basic broad understanding because, I mean, North Africa, come on guys, that's going to be a fun DLC. Anyway, let me know your thoughts, and before we get started, if you like military strategy, tactics, or doctrine, and seeing applied to strategy games, this is definitely the channel for you, so make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the Patreon because it has free after-action reports. Alright, so let's cycle each one of our units. First thing we need to know is where the front line is. It's this red line. It traverses the whole map right there. And then if we click on each one of the, these units, we can see where they can move. And it's within this orange area right here. So if we click on the engineers right here, this tank, this tank, these units at the back line, we can see all the areas that they can move if we wanted to move them. These tanks very clearly can't move into position to assault that tank, which is unfortunate. Alright, so let's move on. Now we have each of, of our units. These are our two units that are currently on the front lines that we are going to conduct combat with. So, this is a British infantry unit. It currently has two attack, three defense, and movement points. Down here we have the number of steps and specialists. So these steps, I correlate them to like the amount of infantry in that unit because these are the units that are these are the units that are going to be suppressed or killed in action. K I A. Same with these this purple and this green because these are specialists. As you can see, we have a toad A T. Toad is extremely important to understand because if we move this unit during this turn, this toad unit will become suppressed and they will not they will no longer be combat effective so if we were to move this unit and then attempt to engage one of these we will be less likely we will deal less damage and then we also have a specialist as well that's currently attached to this unit over here we have engineers engineers are critical to under are critical to a lot of combat but as you can see right there they, they are marked with the engineer symbol there's also ordnance um, towed artillery inside this engineer platoon so, as you can see, if we hover over it one more time, I'll let you read that blue text. Engineers, they negate the entrench shift and the river beach shift. So, if we click on an enemy unit, let's click off this unit, or let's hover over like we we're doing combat. And then if we hold the X key, it allows this combat box right here to stay up and running. As you can see, right here we have a one-to-one. -one. So, what that means is when, when the game rolls its RNG dice we're going to lose or have a casualty of one and this unit over here is going to have a casualty of one then over here up here we have combat modifiers these are both positives so these are the positives on our side as you can see we have a shock effect from our artillery that benefits us and if we come over here to the red these are not negatives for the enemy these are positives for the enemy so I really want to make that really clear that these benefit the enemy. Alright, so this unit currently has terrain, so the terrain provides de defensive cover. It has a river, and it has an entrenchment effect. So we can go into more in-depth if you want to on how each one of those affect combat. Um, let me know, leave a like in the comments, or leave a, like, leave a comment down below if that's something you would like to see. So right now, if we click on this, click this left click this unit, hover over this one, this unit currently we will take three casualties which is not very good and this unit would suffer no casualties possibly be suppressed as you can see defender casualties they may lose something but we're definitely not in this would not be a good assault for us because we will lose three steps right here see also known as casualties so if we click this unit right here um, if we do combat with this unit, this unit will take our our unit will take zero. This unit will possibly probably take two. So now let's do some combat. We're not going to move anyone because we're not going to assault that flank. We're going to click off real quick, and we are going to deselect. Now we have all our objectives. Over here, you can see all our objectives on the right hand side. If we click on this. We can get to this objective within four turns or this objective within seven turns. Ideally, those are just the goals. And then we have bonus objectives if we take it by three turns, three turns, four turns, five turns. 
and then this dark area right here is your fog of war enemy hqs and supplies are always visible inside the fog of war so that's something to know if we were to do a recon like if we were to click this unit and do a recon it would recon this area but it would not clear the fog of war it would just put if it spots a unit it would just identify that unit on the map so realistically we just need to secure these two objectives within nine turns because this is a nine turn match something to take note of over here on this left hand side we have our cards we've already called all our cards into battle as you can see we have three naval bombardments that we could call in and we have three one naval one naval bombardment and three bombers so let's do some combat let's say we want to shift the odds in our favor so let's do naval naval can only attack units that are next to the coastline so within one hex all the way down they can attack all units that are within one hex of the coastline so let's hit this dude right here and let's hammer this infantry alright this unit suffered two KIA or two units were killed in action so if we click off this unit they now only have two steps left in their unit but we're still one to one we will eliminate their last one they have a now they have a 50 percent chance of retreat as you can see right there so if we were to attack this unit they would fall back with like with a flip of a coin we are still going to lose one unit now if we wanted to call in an air attack and just further just wreak havoc on this unit we could do that as well now they are both suppressed so one thing to note about suppressed units is that they would not be killed in action so as your units take casualties it's from left to right so your suppressed units will always be on the right hand side and those units will be the last to be killed in action so the game's just going to go one KIA, 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 and say all four of these are suppressed and you get three KIA, then these three units will become KIA. Something to, to make note of. Suppressed units do not die in combat unless there's no other units to kill. Alright, so now if we hover over this unit, more than likely we are not going to take any casualties. There's some, some RNG we need to make note of. So now if we hold X, we can see zero, two. So... We breached, we still got one unit suppressed, which is unfortunate, and now we move. Our front line's been extended, and we are now in combat. As you can see, our steps, our artillery, and our specialists are, are both suppressed now with that move, even though they were not suppressed before, and the unit that took damage in combat is suppressed as well. Like it rem So now we can move forward. Now let's say we wanted to engage this unit, but now we have our HQ down here. Our HQ has command points. As you can see, this British HQ right here has six command points. So if we were to hover over these engineers, these engineers are really strong units. We do not want to sacrifice them. So if we come down here, we have rear guard, set piece attack, faint attack. But what we really want to do is suppressive fire, right? So if you do a suppressive fire, your units aren't going to take damage. Whereas if you were to do a faint attack, your units could possibly take suppressive or get KIA and flex suppressive on one attacker. Um, it will cause your units to be suppressed because they are going to ex exchange fire. Whereas if you just did suppressive fire, your units are only going to suppress. Oh, I got that backwards. I apologize. Order unit attacking artillery only. The unit takes little or no losses, right? So let's do this. Let's move this tank up to, oh, you can't cross right there. Right here. This tank would suffer four casualties if it were to engage this unit right here. So we do not want to engage this unit with at least right now with these tanks so what we could do is we would call another airstrike in one KIA oh we just called in two airstrikes we're out of airstrikes 
So even with that airstrike, we're still going to lose a lot of damage if we were to engage this unit. It looks like they're on terrain and they're entrenched, so we're not going to engage them like that. So we're going to click off and we're going to engage them with our engineers. We're going to get the breach and we're going to move forward. And we got prisoners with that as well. Alright, now we can continue all our moves. Just like that. Now we've uh, successfully moved this front line up. As you can see, our engineer, our towed artillery is currently suppressed, but our engineer is fine. This unit, I believe, can engage that. They will suffer one casualty, but we could actually faint attack. Where we'll do a zero zero, we'll each get one suppressed unit. Alright, so if we did want to continue to engage that unit, which we can't, because we have no units in there, you could. Now let's do a quick little recon. Let's recon right there. Now let's do a quick supply tutorial. If we click on our supply units, it brings up the supply network. In the book, it says use your scroll wheel. So as you see, right here we have one supply truck available. So if we add one supply truck, it increases our range by five movement points. So let's scroll up. If you scroll up, it adds the supply truck, and then you click accept. So we need to do that for each one of our supply units. If it lets us, it did not. All right, we've added our one supply truck to our unit down here. Let's hit escape. Let's end our turn. We are not going to do combat along this front line. That's just by choice. Alright, here's the enemy's turn. These units are beginning to fall back. And then we're going to do one more turn of combat. As you can see, the enemy is stacking its forces right there. We have three airstrikes and we have one naval strike with two more chances to use it. So, we don't want to really... If we clear this whole ridge line in combat, or this whole coastline, we're really not going to be able to use them later on. So we're going to burn our resources. Alright, so let's click our naval our naval unit. Let's right click this. Let's left click it. Left click right here. Do some quick naval combat. Three KIA. This unit took a ton of casualties. There's only one unit right there. And it's also weak. Which, this weak unit, meaning it no longer exerts zone of control into neighboring hexes. That's actually really good for us if we had units and we wanted to flank around it. So we could easily engage this unit, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to punish. Then right here, it looks like we have a German Panzer. One unit suppressed. We're going to move our tanks up. Here we'll have a one-to-one -one engagement, but we're not going, we don't like those odds, remember? We also have engineers right here, so if we click on our engineers, these units are going to easily destroy this unit. But let's do this. Let's get our airstrike up and running. 2 KIA. Both these units are actually suppressed, so it's an 0 and 2, so we should easily destroy this unit. And it retreated. We also have enemy supplies right there, which we need to capture later. escape out of that we could move this unit up supplies capture oh wow we just walked into a hornet's nest all right we need to continue to move our units up we capture prisoners right there and we need to really get this unit out of our way so what we're going to do is we're going to suppress this back line because these units are absolutely surrounded this unit can't engage this tank. It looks like it's just one tank. We're just going to take it. And we're just going to keep moving forward where we can. Slow and steady. Alright. Oops. That's fine. We're going to engage our imp these units real quick. What we're going to do is make them go away. We have a breach right here. So we should be able to move that unit up there. 
Now, let's do some brief combat right here. Let's just trade blows with this vehicle. See, as you can see, we would never... This unit would definitely take us out. So if we hover over what we can do in this area, we could do suppressive fire, which means we will possibly take casualties, or we could do no retreat. Right? Same with this. But we do need to open up this path. So let's just drop two airstrikes right there. Drop one more. Now let's see what our odds are. Still two to one. Oh and two. So this unit, this engineer unit is a fantastic option. We still traded right there. And this unit's going to move forward. I don't really want it to move forward. I want to move our tank forward. Capture prisoners. Just like that. Alright, that's a real brief overview. I hope that was clear as mud. Um, that's basically how you play this game. I believe we're on turn two and we made significant amounts of progress. So if we really wanted to, we could have probably airstruck this area and capture these passes fairly quickly. But we're not talking about that right now. Other than that, let's um, check our supplies. See if we can add anything real quick. And we'll catch you guys on the other side. Peace out.